to start with. I thought Darby O'Gill and the Little People was just a bit of fun that was playing with Irish fairy stories and Irish mythology, but actually it became so much more moving and so compelling that after maybe the halfway point, I became so fixated that I could not stop watching. I could not take my eyes away from it. And part of the reason, I have to say, is because of Darby O'Gill. He's played by Albert Sharp and his performance was just absolutely fantastic. So for the most part, this will be spoiler free, but there is one scene that I really want to discuss not in any great detail, but it will be a spoiler, so I'll discuss that at the end. But this is a Disney film. It was originally released in 1959, it's directed by Robert Stevenson. And as I said, we have Albert Sharp playing Darby O'Gill. And Darby O'Gill, uh, the, the description on IMDb for the character is a wily old codger. Um, he, he's, he's an older man who has a very unusual relationship with um, King Brian, who is the king of the leprechauns. He is uh, obviously a very small person in the film, uh, and I think the way they've done that, camera angles, and I think some oversized props, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think there's some things might be green screen. I'd love to see, see some kind of like behind the scenes for this. If anybody knows if that exists, please let me know. Um, but I don't think it's on Disney+. Plus. But anyway, that part of you know, kind of showing the leprechauns, the height of them and the scale, I thought was, was very effectively done. And he gets to have three wishes. And he spends a lot of the film trying to work out what some of these wishes should be. And it's maybe not predictable. And honestly, I found it to be very moving. And yeah, the first half of the film, give or take, just felt like almost gimmicky, like they were capitalising on this kind of mythological culture of Ireland and I wasn't really taking it seriously. But then it got serious and that's not to say the comedy was missing, there's always comedy throughout it, but certainly it became, well... I choked up at one point. It was very moving, largely, as I said, because of uh, Albert Sharp's performance. It was just compelling. Um, we also have Sean Connery as Michael McBride, the love interest or potential love interest of Katie, played by Janet Monroe. Katie is Darby's daughter. And it's unclear what their future is going to be because it seems like McBride has been brought in to take over... Darby O'Gill's job and obviously that's a threat but Katie's not quite fully aware of the situation that's going on there are some secrets being held back and there is this constant threat that maybe she'll be told maybe she'll find out it's unclear what the ending of this is going to be like or even what direction the last third of the film is going to take and the last third is really unpredictable and that's kind of really when I became so engrossed in this. I just could not stop watching it. It's beautifully done. It's fantastically shot. I don't know if any of this was set in Ireland. Does IMDb tell me where this was filmed? Uh, filming locations, Albertson Ranch, Trion Trionfo, Trionfo, California. None of the information on IMDb suggests it was ever filmed in Ireland, which doesn't really surprise me at all um but it's still beautiful you still have some really nice scenery the set designs are quite nice um the pub in particular is quite a small set but it's very atmospheric and it works very well and i think it was um very effectively done really enjoyable film if you've previously started watching it and gave up i'd urge you to go back and give it another go as I said, the first half, give or take, maybe less than the first half, I didn't, you know, I, I was just watching it because it was a Disney film and it was on my list, and I was obviously going to persevere with it, but then it then it got good, to, to put it simply. Um, and I'm really, really thrilled that I, I had a reason to watch this. So a spoiler from now, kind of a big spoiler, so definitely don't carry on listening to me if you plan on watching this. Um, the bit that I loved the most, that I found so compelling and so gorgeous to watch, it was the Banshee and how that was done. And for not just 
how it was done in terms of the cinematography and the way I mean it, it was stunning absolutely gorgeous but also O'Gill's reaction to it and the raw emotions and the fear and the panic and the love for his daughter and he just encompassed so many raw human emotions at once that it was just incredible to watch and as I said um Albert Sharp's performance was just wonderful and then and then we had the, the death coach and it was just haunting and so beautiful and what King Brian did then I wanted to hug him it was just it was marvelous and honestly that turned it you know after the halfway mark I was thinking oh this is a pretty good film actually that scene made it a, a fantastic film and I truly loved it and I'm so glad I'm, I'm getting emotional <laughs> do you know when films touch you in ways that you didn't expect that's exactly what we got with this I thought this would be a a fun fantasy film that I wouldn't take too seriously, that perhaps didn't take itself too seriously. But it became something so beautiful <laughs> and so emotional and it was fabulous. It was absolutely fabulous. If you haven't seen it, well, I've clearly ruined the best bit for you now, so I hope you have seen it. But if you haven't, for any reason, give it a watch. Even just watch that scene, but it's on Disney+. Plus. If you have Disney+, Plus. It's essentially otherwise free. Um, give it a go. I, I think it's, it's really beautiful and, and definitely worth watching.